In this video, we're going to prove Kelvin's circulation theorem for a homogeneous inviscid fluid. You see here the momentum equation for a homogeneous inviscid fluid, the acceleration following the flow, dUi by dt, is equal to the gravitational term, and you notice that we've written gravity in a gravity-aligned coordinate system so that the x3 direction is opposite to, to gravity, or what we would normally call upward. And then minus the pressure gradient. And because the fluid is homogeneous, the density here is just a constant rho naught. Now we're going to be interested in a vortex tube, which we've talked about before. Uh, the circulation around a vortex tube is uniform, regardless of where you cut it, uh, according to Helmholtz's second theorem. And a vortex tube moves with the flow, according to Helmholtz's first theorem. So we have a vortex tube moving with the flow with a single value of the circulation that we can assign to the whole tube. And now we'd like to know if, as the tube moves through the flow, does that circulation change in time? Well, the way we do this is to set up the circulation as a line integral around the vortex tube. Um, so what I've shown here is basically the definition of the integral. We imagine integrating from point to point in these closely spaced points in a circuit around the tube and the distance between each pair of points is a little vector and we call it delta x and then we give it the label n so there are n little points around the tube and of course eventually we'll take the limit as the size of delta x goes to zero and the number of delta x's goes to infinity so Here's the line integral that defines the circulation, and now we have to figure out how to differentiate it. So to get the material derivative, d gamma by dt, we have d by dt of this line integral. And what we're going to do is write it, again using the definition of the integral, as a limit of little integrals between closely spaced points. So the limit as delta x goes to zero of the sum over n of all of these points uh, u dot dx and now we can bring the material derivative inside this summation because it's just a sum of many terms and and the, uh, the material derivative of the sum is the sum of the material derivatives. So so we have, just to summarize, d gamma by dt equals the limit of the sum of d by dt of ui delta xi. And you'll notice now that I've written the vectors u and delta x in index notation. So i is a dummy variable that gets summed over. Now we can carry out this differentiation of each of these terms. So we get the limit of the sum. And then by the product rule, we first have material derivative of ui of n times delta xi n, and then plus ui n material derivative of delta xi n. So that's just application of the standard product rule. Okay, and then we realize that, uh, let's see, here the first term is the same. Oops, here the first term is the same. But the second term, uh, the material derivative of delta x is just delta u. So d, d by dt of delta xi, number n, is just u n. And oops, I neglected to write the n down here. But, well, you see, that's what it is. Okay, so uh, for our next step, we can now go ahead and take this limit as the, as the uh, differentials become small. And this becomes, once again, a, a line integral around a closed circuit. But now du, and, du i by dt has been replaced by 
the sum of the forces that make that acceleration, the gravitational force minus g delta i3 minus the gradient of the pressure, d by dx i, of pressure over the density rho naught, and then the delta x's become just a standard differential dx i. Likewise, um, the, the u term is u i delta u i, and in the limit is delta u i goes to zero. This goes to u i d u i. Now, every term in here is a perfect differential. There are three terms, all perfect differentials. The first one, uh, minus g delta i3 dx i, is minus g dx3, and since minus g is, well, since g is a constant, then this becomes minus d of gx3. The next term is also a perfect differential. It's just d by dx i of this times dx i summed over i. What you wind up with is, this is by the chain rule, this is the perfect differential of p over rho naught. And then finally ui du i is the perfect differential of ui squared over 2. The reason that it's important that these are perfect differentials is that when you integrate a differential over some curve, what you get is the value of the differential at the end of the curve minus the value at the beginning of the curve. And so when the curve is closed, the beginning and end are actually the same point in space, and so the difference of the, of the quantity between beginning and end is zero. Therefore, this whole thing adds up to zero, and the material derivative of the circulation gamma with respect to time is zero. What does this mean? It means that vortex tubes are immortal. They live forever. Or, to put it a little bit more formally, in an inviscid homogeneous fluid, the circulation around a vortex tube does not change in time. And that is Kelvin's theorem.